Hey guys, hope you all are having a good day. This is Gunner here with his uh, Dutch Star 4304 Motor Coach 2008. I am getting ready to change out the fuel filters, the hydraulic filter and the air filter for the uh, air system which operates the brakes and the um, air suspension. So what I've done is I've purchased the filters. The first one I'm going to do is going to be a combination filter and water separator, which is this box right here. And it is an FJ1003. And it uh, is a pretty good sized filter. Let me pull it out of the box here so you all can see what it looks like. Right there, it's got a drain on the bottom, monitoring plug for the monitoring, uh, which monitors any moisture that may be coming through there. And it's got a plug in the center hole so that you can fill up the outsides of the filter. You're not really supposed to fill up that center hole because that goes directly into your fuel injection. Okay, folks, here we are. Okay, folks, here we are. The filters are located in the side compartment, passenger side, right next to the engine. When you open that up, all the filters are there. There's the two fuel filters. There's the uh, desiccant filter for the air system for your brakes and your suspension. And back in here is the hydraulic uh, filter, which takes care of uh, the power steering and any other hydraulics that you may have that are related to the chassis. I'm just about ready to tackle this filter here. I've got a pan underneath to trap any fluid that comes out and you have to pull off this electrical connection right here. You can also see there is a manual drain so you can drain the, the uh, water out of the system. And I've got a very familiar looking uh, oil filter type wrench that takes care of this particular type and size of filter. So I'm gonna get that past this electrical cable here and I'm going to, you get more twist near the bottom. So I'm just about to pull on it and it is tight. <sighs> Sorry about that guys. I didn't want you to see me struggling. And cursing, somebody put this filter on and didn't put any lubrication on the seal. So I had a heck of a time getting it free. So now it should, it should come off. <sighs> well, it should come off. So here, we're gonna try again with the wrench, just a little bit too tight for my hand. This wrench back on there. Give it another pull, there it comes. You can hear the seal squeaking. They should have either put a thin film of oil, probably better than actually either that or diesel fuel, but they shouldn't come off that tight. If you've ever had an oil filter that does that, uh, same principle. So there you can already see diesel fuel coming out the top of it. Let it loose a little bit. You can also drain from the bottom as well, so it doesn't make as much of a mess around the sides, but I failed to do that. So now you can see all the diesel fuel running into the pan. Catch that so it doesn't get into the ground. We got a lot of wells around here and you don't want to contaminate uh, the groundwater source. Okay, I got the new filter on. Just about ready to start. Get this thing all cleared out of air before I do the second filter. Okay, so far it started right up. The engine isn't hesitating. Looks like I filled the fuel filter uh, cleanly enough with fuel so that there really wasn't much air in there. These things have a constant flow of fuel to the engine and then back to the tank. So that air, if there's any in there, is gonna bleed out pretty quick. 
All right, I'm gonna let it run for a minute or two. You can see that the uh, air pressure is still trying to build up. Um, we'll see you back at the uh, engine compartment with the second filter. Okay, the secondary filter did not come with the little cap that they put on the water separator in the center so that you can just pour the fuel that you're filling the filter up with around the sides. So I'm gonna try to reuse this one for the second filter. The hole looks about the same size. And here is the second filter. It has some sort of a center O-ring as well. Not sure quite what that is, but we'll find out momentarily. It's an FF5488. That filter right there is the second uh, fuel filter. And uh, we'll get to it right now. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Just to let you know, I'm breathing a little heavy because the second filter was on just as tight as the first one, so I thought I would prep everything for y'all so you wouldn't have to uh, watch my agony through this. Let me flip this around. Okay, there we go. There's the first filter. There's the second filter. That filter has not been taken off yet. And I did actually um, loosen that up so I can get it off with my hand. And there is the new filter. And you can see the little plug that I put in the center and I've already pre-filled it with fuel. There is a small O-ring that came with it that is right there. And I have a feeling that's gonna go onto the center. So we'll see once I get this filter off. I'm going to start loosening that one up and it's coming right off because I've already pre-loosened it for you all. Get this pan, it's right above the mud flap so that's going to make a little bit of a job there. So then once, there's no way to pre-drain that so you just kind of have to loosen it to the point where it almost falls off. and. I'm gonna need two hands, one to hold the mud flap out of the way. So I'm gonna shut the camera off and we'll go from there. Okay, that's it. I've got both filters in place. I've already started the engine on the first filter and I'm just about ready to go and get the engine going on the second filter. So we will see in a second here how that works. Come back here and check for any leaks while the engine is running. See you in a minute. <sighs> All right, folks, excuse my huffing and puffing, but uh, those filters were a bear to get off. So normally you have to fill the filters with diesel fuel. So usually there's a, a certain amount of um, uh, fuel that helps lubricate the seal so it doesn't over tighten. The second filter actually on the filter says hand tighten and then two three quarters of a turn which did make it pretty tight. Um, I got pretty big hands, so I actually went half a turn and it seemed already way too tight. Let's get this thing started. Get our glow plug light. And ready, set, go. It's running. It's running, it's a cold engine. There was a tiny bit of hesitation, but overall, I think a success. I'm not sure how much labor they charge you, but I bought all these filters on Amazon with the exception of the air system I couldn't find on Amazon. I may have to try to cross-reference that. That desiccant filter for the uh, brake and suspension air system was actually pretty expensive. It was about 50 bucks. So let's go. I can hear this puppy is purring. Love this Cummins motor is one of the best motors. We're gonna get out there. I can hear it running. Walking out under my slide. I can hear it running, running smooth. Let's check it out and see if there's any, any leaks whatsoever. There we go, no leaks. Another success story. This is my first time on this particular engine and we are
are good to go. The next filter I'm going to tackle is the air dryer filter for the brake and suspension system.